Well, it's a birthday of my sweet lady, F1 Toinette. You live in the UK. Mama, we don't say anything. And this one is coming from all of us here in Ghana, in uh, Togo, in Aflau, in uh, Akachi, in Accra, Tema, from Lucy, uh, myself, Pauline. Okay, that's it. That's <laughs> it. Living. Time's up. Let's do the newspapers. <laughs> Daily graphic newspaper, front page of the graphic. High Court freezes GFA's activities and junction to hold for 10 days. So uh, there's, a, there's a main issue, which is the petition before the High Court. Uh, but following that, yesterday we saw Attorney General, Ms. Gloria Kufu, uh, go to court to get an injunction. That's holding for 10 days. Uh, but what happens to Galka's attempt to negotiate to get government to rescind its decision. A bit of what is in the paper today says the process by the government to dissolve the Ghana Football Association was set in motion yesterday when the High Court temporarily froze all activities of the association. The injunction, which will last for 10 days, in effect, bars the GFA and its officials from engaging in any form of football-related activity. So this includes the appointment and election of officials, disposing of assets of the GFA, organizing football matches, mm -hmm. among other football-related activities. Mm. The court presided over by Mr. Justice Samuel Esiodu granted the interim injunction request from the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Gloria Ekufu. The interim injunction will last for 10 days, after which the Attorney General is expected to go on, on notice to show cause why the GFA should be dissolved. So there we have it, uh, and the Attorney General speaking to the media afterwards. So it looks like government is absolutely determined to do this. Uh, in the meantime, Gloria Kufu also says she, her doors are open. Uh, if people want to petition or they want to come forward and talk, they are ready to. But there are a lot of people who are excited about the move, uh, what government is doing. And they would say, don't listen to Galka. Go ahead and do what you want to do. They couldn't bite when uh, Kwesin Yantechi was there. Uh, there are people who are still very close to him. What can they do now? Yeah. Uh, still on the front page of the paper, don't turn patients away. Ghana Health Service directs all government hospitals. But who actually believes this directive? There are many people who are turned away. Their stories are not shared on television or radio or on social media. Is the ministry coming out or the Ghana Health Service coming out to say this now, even though they've, we know that they've issued directives in the past, only because of uh, this matter that has essentially gone viral? What's different with this directive? We've had it before and things have still happened. Um, so some of us still very much skeptical. Uh, also, Volta Lake Transport needs capital injunction to survive. And in the center spread of the paper, President Ekufuado swears in members of four boards. Let's increase momentum in fight against child labor. And on the back page of the paper, that story, the Volta Lake Transport needs a capital injunction in, injection to survive. That full story is on the back page of the Daily Graphic newspaper. So we'll fix your water challenges by Omiya Ashur's Salaga residence. That's it for the graphic this morning. There are other stories in the paper, by the way. Yeah, uh, we know that this um, court's 10-day uh, injunction is dominating the newspapers. It's dominating both the Daily Guide and the Ghanaian Times. Let me look at the Ghanaian Times. It has on the front page, court slabs 10-day ban on the GFA, bans all officials, and stops all football activities. What's missing there is they're related. Usually you'll find it football-related activities. Well, that's good. Uh, uh, only passport birth certificates eligible for Ghana card registration. Hmm. And this thing and the minority and their protestations, it just won't go away. It's uh, saying that the National Identification Authority has insisted that only those who possess Ghanaian passports and birth certificates will make it onto the National Identification Register. Briefing Parliament in Accra yesterday at the, at the BS of the minority on the ongoing, etc., etc., uh, national identification exercise. The acting executive secretary, Professor Kenatefa, said until the law changes, those documents remain the legally recognized proof of Ghanaian identity. Hmm. The law has to change quickly because you cannot only concentrate on, on people who have passports and birth certificates. Few Ghanaians do have it. I mean, just in the, in the term, few literally. 
you, know, you, you just oppose that with our population and the number who could have access. Anyway, so we have Ghana, Guinea meets over Togo political on pass. This one too is very important. Uh, we know the president of Guinea, Alpha Conde, yesterday paid a day's working visit to the president, Nadu Dankwe Kufuado, at the Jubilee House to discuss uh, an ongoing political impasse in Togo. He arrived in the country uh, and, and uh, was met on an arrival at the Jubilee House. And we know that he's been appointed, that's uh, President Alpha Conde, has been appointed uh, by ECOWAS to support President Kufuado in the mediation process. So we hope that the president has been trying to make a truce as far as um, the political tension in Togo is concerned. Uh, president uh, Yadema, on, oh, uh, Yadema on one side, as well as um, the political opposition on the other side. Yeah, it led to some, some difficulties, some clashes in the process. I see that uh, we can have some truce as far as that is concerned. The Ghana. Uh, tourism Authority has meanwhile closed down the Labadi Beach or the La Beach Resort and they closed it for obvious reasons. This has nothing to do with the Labadi Beach. Not the, not As in the Labadi Beach Hotel. Not the hotel. This one is the beach. The beach. Uh, on the back page, US South Korea support Ghana with some $7.2 million grant to build capacities of health professionals and Ghanaians must pay for use of plastics, according to Ashibe. And that's a convener for the Media Coalition Against Galamsek and Ashibe, calling on government to introduce a policy where individuals will be surcharged for the use of plastics. This, he said, would make it more expensive for people to use plastics and save the environment for dangers associated with it. So usually on the personal level, this is what I do. When I go to, let's say, a shop or uh, a convenience store, it could be a mat of a fuel station, etc. And they want to give me these um, bags, carrier bags, uh, polythene carrier bags. I refuse to accept because I will take the item, rather, and just take it into my car or wherever I'm going. Because if I know the distance between, so that I don't tend to litter. Uh, so we should refuse the polythene? Well, not necessarily. The thing is that we need to find alternatives. They should change to paper bags. Yeah, we need to find alternatives mm -hmm. for packaging. I think that would be a better way of going around it. Or we put in, in place the right technical support systems to... Recycle. Um, yeah, we, we need to. Okay. All right, you're through? Yeah. Let's do the final um, newspaper front page. A thousand and eight perish in five months, increasing casualties from road traffic accidents. And this figure represents a 10.5% increase compared to 2017. Uh, a summary of road traffic casualties compiled by the National Road Safety Commission and the Motor Traffic and Transport Department of the Ghana Police Service revealed that 5,630 persons sustained various degrees of injuries in the first five months of 2018. And this represents a 9.7% increase over the 5,133 commuters who sustained various degrees of injuries between January and May 2017. You can read on. That's a, a good breakdown. The number of vehicles involved, commercial vehicles involved as well, pedestrians knocked down. Uh, that figure is 1,412. Unbelievable. The private vehicles uh, also involved in this. And you would think, really, that the commercial vehicles will be more. But commercial vehicles, 2,845. Uh, compare that with the private vehicles, which is 2,961. So this figure uh, was involved in one accident or the other. Uh, there's also a breakdown of the motorcycles. Motorcycle accident recorded a 17.54% increase this year, hitting 1,260 compared to the 1,072 registered in 2017. So there's more to read on. This is on page two, story by Elvis Dacon in Accra on road accidents, the figures. Let's all read. Uh, also, stop selling government vehicles at ridiculous prices, according to an expert. Uh, experts back a NASA's methodology, but lawyer disagrees. RTI action campaign kicks against portions of bail. And GCB Bank pumps 100,000 Ghana cities into CSR to mark 65th 
anniversary. That's it for the front page headlines the final newspaper. All right, so we have to look at the Daily Guide newspaper has on the front page, Cost Stop GFA, Kwese brings World Cup to Africa, uh, Nana hosts Alpha Conde, but uh, this has been ongoing for a number of days. Jubilee House girl suspended, and we know um, those who had been campaigning. Who's the girl? Louise Carroll? Yeah, who had been um, doing some advocacy on social media for the MPP during the campaign, who are presidential staffers and those who even have not been appointed, have been on this crusade. Um, and that I think there's a hashtag, uh, support full soldiers. I mean, some, it's something yeah. related to full soldiers and all that. Some of Brian Boabing and some of them, uh, Agnes Okran, AC Levels and all <laughs> of them. Um, so she's been suspended. We're told that she's been suspended for 30 days. Oh. One of the friends I have said, well, will she, will she be paid or not? So I, I said, well, the thing is that I, they said she, she made a post. It didn't go down well, so mm. to speak. Um, the post relatedly just said that uh, she has found a way not to deal with full soldiers in, in a way. Mm. And uh, she says this is her post. She has the name as Felicity Nelson, and she said... No, she was commenting okay, 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 on okay, somebody's okay. post. Yes, on Felicity Nelson's post. That's, it says, as a general rule, I don't engage party full soldiers. Okay, that's what Felicity Nelson posted. And then when she was also... Commenting. She said, mm -hmm. you shouldn't. You can't reason with them. It's like tribalists. And it doesn't go down well with all the others. Well, a couple of them, and a couple of them. I spoke to a couple of them. Uh, well, let's see how it goes. Um, on the center spread, though, uh, we have the news one pull out of the Daily Guy. I always love that. Uh, it says uh, Joyce Blessing accuses ex manager of cheating. You know, we know Chris Yenis has been uh, one person and earthing talent across. Uh, cheating as in what? Okay. Uh, has accused um, ex manager and CEO of Media Excel, Chris Yenis, of cheating. According to she worked under his management, alleging he took hundreds of Ghana cities belonging to her. And the story It's normal, or she doesn't know. Does she know the kind of things that Chris Yenis had to do to get yeah, her yeah, to be on it. shows yeah, and that things question, like that? Eh, it's and, a part of the business. And Kwesi, Please move Kwesi on. is one of the Please move on. Um, hard-working producers People around. People struggle to... Mm. And, and I, I don't know. It's either you appreciate or you just simply keep quiet well, the and thing move is on. Because she's moved on and she's doing well. I think mm. she should stay there. Mm. Don't, don't kind of look back and try to, try to, uh, try to condemn back. or... Try to get back or, at somebody. Yeah, or yeah. give him a bad name. He did unbelievable things and i think that artists have no idea the sort of things that their managers have to do mm. to get them where sure. they get to sure. ultimately sure. and i really don't want to tolerate her right mm. now mm. <laughs> <laughs> i never disrespected dumelo abeku santana uh, and this is being sourced to d black it says rapper d black has rubbish reports claiming he said John dumelo and abeku santana are not better than any of the appointed tourism ambassadors in Ghana. Uh, he said, I never said hey. that. I never really meant that. Uh, I support Kwesi Nyantechi, musician. This one is called Wear Shades. A Sunyani based musician has uh, Wear Shades. His claim to fame, you know, Wear Shades. Um, one person I know who knows all the underground artists is Derek Ekosa, <laughs> the old boy of Pojoba, Pojos. Uh, he knows all the underground artists. Uh, so we have Overwise, Drops, Me and You. Mm. And those are the stories we have, basically. All right, let's quickly run through uh, the Business and Financial Times, the last newspaper, and then we will go online. Business and Financial Times, all hands on deck. Chiramating tells Ghanaians in China, uh, we need robust and resilient local businesses. Uh, AFC, CFTA. That's the African Continental Free Trade Area. It uh, represents two African businesses, and you have to grab the paper to read the details of that. Also, Africa loses 29 billion U.S. dollars of its wealth yearly. It's an IEA report. Development authorities to manage 1 million U.S. dollars per constituency, according to Howard Comson. Remember her? No further comments. That's it for the Business and Financial Times. Let's do myjoyonline.com. Before that, let's read some of your messages. And uh, this one is interesting. It's from Amofa Eric in Cape Coast. Good morning to you, Eric Amofa. 
X says, good morning, my mommy. Good morning, Roland. Good morning, Benedict. Good morning, I'm sure I always want to listen to you before any other thing. So, Eric, I'm over in Cape Coast. We thank you for watching our show every day. Uh, oh, somebody says, I'm bullying you, Roland. Um, and then he says, I, you don't even read my messages of late. Says Stone in Kumasi. So, I am being accused of many things. Uh, I don't know. Can I apologize? Are we friends again? This one says, I was shocked to have heard a presidential staffer denigrating party foot soldiers simply because you find yourself in a comfortable zone. Hmm. Uh, blueprints in Isikado, uh, Ketan. And I'll just have to cut the message short. Thank you very much. This one says, how come people die like flies on our roads? How? Uh, if you media people don't stop uh, hey, this NDC MPP, like how how is this related to anything i don't get your comments the first one i do but the second one where you're going i don't get it this one says uh, can you tell me what our transport ministers are doing about our roads a thousand and eight is not a small number sham uh, dean in tamale this is in response to uh, that uh, you know that record really in the final newspaper in terms of the figures, road traffic accidents. This one says the hospital staff may be justified for turning the patients away. We need to find out under what operational guidelines do nurses work. I'm convinced nurses are made to pay their own pockets, uh, pay from their own pockets, should they treat a patient under such condition and the patient is unable to pay for cost of treatments on recovery. My spouse, a nurse, had ever suffered it. Good morning. If it has to do with the, um, the, this recent issue of a 70-year-old man, I don't think it had to do with money in any way. Uh, this one says, happy birthday to F4 Antoinette of UK and Bernardo Clue of Accra. God bless you all. Mm. It's from Eric Mensa Oklu in Akachi. You and Roland, you have one thing in common, at least I know now. Let's do online, majorline.com, Roland. Some. It's family business. Let's move <laughs> on. Uh, Free Zones board denies publication, claiming Samuel Uku's wife grabbed juicy feeding contracts as uh, the Ghana Free Zones board uh, authority, the board authority, has uh, denied a publication in the Palava newspaper, claiming that the wife of MPP youth organizer, Samuel Uku, has been granted suspicious contracts. And then we have um, Nigeria Ghana top online searches for abortion pill report. While Nigeria's abortion laws are some of the most restrictive in the world, the country ranks top uh, among countries as citizens are in search of uh, abortion pills, a new survey has revealed. So I'm told they Google a lot of cytotech. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. Uh, corruption has held back African football and Nazar Remia on us on Monday that African football continues to be held back on the world stage. Not only, uh, not only football, I mean, all facets of our society, really. We have to be truthful. Colony GVG attempts to force, forcefully plug into Telco's database after deadline snob. Attempts to forcefully. I say, speaker wants no bed syndrome criminalized. And then we have a couple. Uh, Chima Mandangozi Adichie is worthy winner. Nigerian author Chima Mandangozi Adichie has won this year's Pen Pinter Prize. Literary works and writing authorship is the way to go. Yeah. Uh, communication analyst at presidency suspended over and savory foot soldier remark. <laughs> it's called Dr. Louis Carol Sewa Donko. Donko. All right. So we have Dr. Arthur Kennedy, right? Solving the Nobel crisis. Still writing from his base. Yeah, in All the right. US. Okay, many other stories uh, on uh, the Major Online page. The GFA scandal, we fail to act for far too long, Fred Papo admits. But there's no but. You fail to act, and that's why we're where we are. Just hang in there. Let government do what they want to do. You're too late, perhaps. Are they or are they not? Uh, Benedict will join us in a bit, but here are more messages. I'm really glad how Joy News is so involved in this, in this season's National Science Mass Quiz. You guys nailed it. Now making it 
a national in interest. Thanks a lot, Joy News. This is from Michael Edu Aye. Uh, this one says, uh, always enjoys your show. Keep up the good work. Kindly include your name when you send us messages. This one says... I always enjoy your program. GFA must be dissolved Thank Thank with you. immediate effects and appoint new people to take over. I don't blame Nyanteshi because they trust him and allow him to stay there for long, for longer period. Uh, that's why he decided to do. And I don't encourage you to say dubious. We haven't concluded yet. So, you know, let's just discuss it as we have seen it in that documentary. Yeah. Uh, this one says... No prejudices. <laughs> uh, I'm diligently in love with your motivational message this morning. <laughs> God bless you. I think I'm addicted to your show. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Ra uh, Raman, GN Bank in Mankasim. Thank you very much uh, for watching our show. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for being there. Mr. Raman, GN Bank in Mankasim. We acknowledge all your messages. We'll come back and share many more with everybody else, but right now we've got a link up. Benedict. Benedict. Yes, sir. Well done in Mama yeah. Morning. I'm told that Morning. you'll be going to the World Cup in Russia. I mean, a venue around Accra where they'll be showing the matches. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> you'll be doing some commentary <laughs> from there. Well, uh, it will happen. That, that's what we've yeah. got into. And I can be in Russia. We couldn't, well. we couldn't send you to Russia. Well, I can be in Russia. I wonder if. Ghanaian sports journalists would go to Russia. If to any of them will go at all. Yeah. We'll, we'll by this time, they would have been clamoring for uh, visas. Or would oh. have been there by now, I think. We'll <laughs> in Mamavi, I can promise you that by the time the World Cup will end, I'll be in Russia. Uh, Amen. Yeah, well, Nyantichi, Whatever that means. Has we want you. live oh, updates I'll be, here I'll on the air. Sure. I can promise you has that I'll be promise. What, it, has, it has nothing to do what's with What's on uh, your uh, table, by I'll the be, way? What are we looking but, uh, at this morning? The, the 68th FIFA Congress uh, currently is underway. You know, <gasps> Russia and Ghana is three hours difference. Yeah. So as you speak now, they've started the Congress, and it's there we will know the uh, team that will host the 2026 uh, uh, FIFA uh, World Cup, the expansion of the World Cup from. Uh, 32 to 48 teams. Mm. So the bid uh, is between Morocco and then the United bid. That's uh, the United States of America, Canada, and then Mexico. So we'll see how that will uh, pan out. But by 9.30, that's uh, 1 uh, p.m. local time in Russia, we'll know the country that will host the 2026 World Cup. And because of what happened with the previous voting, the uh, 2018, that's this year's own, as well as the Qatar, the Qatar own. Now they've changed the system. Instead of the uh, 22 executive committee or now the council voting on behalf of the member associations, we're going to have the 211 member associations. But this time there is no Ghana because of the issues happening. And I'm so, told it's not also Ghana. Also, we're not voting. Kosovo. Kosovo is also not. So, we're not voting. Kosovo. So, now Ghana and Kosovo. Yeah, Ghana and Kosovo. But you know that. Ghana yeah. is Kosovo. But I was, following, Kosovo. I, was following, I was following the Congress before I walked into the studio. Uh, the uh, FIFA General Secretary, that Samora, mentioned that 210 instead of the 211. So, which obviously tells you that Ghana is out. They're not even recognizing Kosovo, Kosovo. at this uh, mm. uh, Congress. So, wow. it's going to be 210 and member associations okay. that are going to vote All instead right. of the initial uh, 22 where people can you know go and see them and probably mm. give them something and okay. uh, they will cover right, everything up and the, the voting is uh, is transparent it will be shown on a screen that uh, all are of you, are you know. showing us anything this morning? Uh, I would have loved to. Are yeah. you doing okay. some YouTube live so of the yeah, so there, There's a YouTube live. So let's leave the details. All right. Mm. We'll take Just a give us the details. Quick breather, and Benedict will be back with more.